Hey y'all, Achieved Ed here. This is my guide on how to get all of the legendary armaments in Elden Ring, so let's get it. I'm going to run this like you're at the end of the game and you've missed a few weapons, so we're just going to go just like that. The first weapon that you can potentially get is found at the Warmaster Shack, which is a small shack that is in Stormhill. It's kind of right in the center, just before you go to the bridge that takes you to um, Kaled. In the Warmaster Shack, you're going to find Knight Burnall. He sells you um, a couple Ashes of War if you want to buy those ahead of time. Either way, you can fight him here. It's a bit of a difficult fight because he's tougher than what you should be at level and skill-wise. But if you manage to take him down now, you will get the Devourer Scepter. I did not do that in my original playthrough, so I'm not going to include it here. I'm going to put it at the very end, which is where you would find it otherwise. Our first stop is at the very southern portion of the Weeping Peninsula, which is in southern Limgrave. You're going to go to Fort Morn, and you're going to wake your work your way through the fort to the beside the Rampart Gowl side of grace and you're going to go and fight the Leonine Misbegotten. From the side of grace you're just going to hop down off the edge of the castle and the boss fight is going to be straight in front of you. Um, the Leonine is pretty aggressive. It hits very fast and very hard for the beginning of the game. So if you're still in the beginning, uh, you know, take your time, sit, uh, summon your spirit, whatever you have to do. Um, it staggers very easily if you hit, hit it with a lot of damage, and I believe it's weak to thrust attacks, so keep those in mind when you go and fight it. I'll just let the rest of this fight play out because it's actually pretty quick. Our second stop is at the lower manor level side of grace in the carry manor in northern Liernia of the lakes. From the side of grace you're just going to go outside and take the upper walkways. When you get to the intersection ahead you're going to turn left instead of continuing straight. Follow that path and you'll see some roofs on your left. You need to hop down onto one roof and then walk onto the next one that has a hole in the roof. Go down the ladder and inside the chest there is going to be the sword of night and flame. Our third stop is going to be the chamber outside the Plaza Side of Grace, which is found in Red Main Castle, which is found in southeastern Kaled. It's right before you fight Radon, um, the star guy. Head outside from the Side of Grace, and you're going to go right into a boss fight. It is going to be another Leonine Misbegotten, and after about a minute, it's going to spawn in a Crucible Knight as well. I won't bother talking about the Leonine because we've already fought one. But the Crucible Knight, yeah, you may or may not have fought one yet at this point. I fought my fair share, so I knew, kind of knew what they were all about. But they are um, very slow moving, but they can cover a lot of area. And at specifically 50% health, they will sprout wings and a tail and become more aggressive and will be able to cover a much longer range, both by using its wings to cover distance and its tail has a very, very large hitbox. So keep those in mind as you move through the fight.
Our fourth stop is at the Shaded Castle, which is located between Altus Plateau and the Mount uh, Gelmir area. You actually need to go through the little valley that divides the two areas. From the side of Grace, you're going to go up the ladder on your left here, and you're going to fight your way through a couple enemies. There's um, two or three rooms, I think, full of enemies that you need to... You can just run past everybody. You'll get to a lift that's going to take you to the walkway that takes you to the boss fight. The actual boss fight itself, if you use a summon that can keep its attention, is pretty easy. Um, the biggest things to worry about for Elmer, which is the name of the boss, is that his weapon can be used at a very, very long range. He has a, a magic ability where he can throw it out. Um, I guess like a yo-yo is the best way I could describe it. He can use it at distance where it doesn't have to be in his hand. So if you're trying to keep distance and your ash isn't keeping the boss's focus, then make sure you watch out for that. Um, make sure you stay high, topped up on health, because I think he does a lot of damage at the very beginning. I didn't have any trouble with it because my summon was all up in his face, but if your summon's not all up in his face, then I would make sure you stay high on health, and uh, that's about it. Our next stop is the Earth Tree Sanctuary side of Grace, which you get after you defeat Godfrey the First Icon in uh, Lindale, Capital of Ash, right before you go and fight um, uh, Sharbar Morgat. From the side of Grace, you're going to head out of the western door. You're going to go into the next building, down the lift, and onto the next walkway. You're going to see a giant sword stuck in the wall with a dragon hand attached to it at the end. You're going to jump onto the sword and very carefully make your way to the top. At the very top there is going to be the weapon, the Bolt of Grand Sacks. Our next stop is the Castle Soul in the mountaintop of the Giants. You're going to come across a church halfway through. That's the side of grace that we're going to start at. This one's extremely simple. Once you make it to the church, you're just going to walk into the next room and it's going to be sitting uh, in front of the altar with a little guy praying in front of it. Our next stop is the Cave of the Forlorn, which is found in the Consecrated Snowfield after you've gotten both halves of the Secret Halic Tree Medallion, one from the Village of the Ibanorix and the other one from the top of Castle Soul. In the cave, you're just going to run straight across this room that you spawn in into the next room. There are going to be a couple pillars of rock that you can climb onto. In a small little cavern on the left is going to be the one you want to climb onto. You're going to sprint jump across and you will find a hole behind it and that hole is going to be a couple jellyfish enemies and in one of the rooms ahead is going to be a large hole in the ground that you need to go down and down there you're going to find the boss fight and it's going to be another leonine misbegotten, misbegotten but this time it's called the leonine crusader so this one's a little bit tougher 
a little bit higher health, but the actual fight doesn't change. It just has a few holy attacks this time around. So just use your summon like you would for any other Leonine fight, and you'll be good to go. Our final stop, if you didn't get the Devouring Scepter from Knight Bernal in the very beginning, is going to be the Beside the Great Bridge Side of Grace, which is found in the Crumbling Farm Azula, right before you fight Malekith the Black Blade. Spawning in, you're just going to make your way outside and onto the bridge, and instead of going up towards the boss fight, you're going to go down the opposite way. You will come to a couple rooms full of dead enemies, no need to worry about them. Climb down the ladder, and ahead of you is going to be a gazebo type building. If you sneak up towards it but don't go inside, you will be uh, invaded by Recusant Bernal, which is what his other name is. If you go inside the gazebo, you'll be surprise attacked by a couple enemies. So I suggest just sneaking up towards the door until you get invaded and then back away. And then all you've got to do is take down Recusant Bernal. If it's the first time you fought him, then you'll get the Devourer Scepter. If it's not, then you won't get it. I don't get it this time around because I've already fought him in this playthrough. But just know that that's how you get it. And that'll be all nine. You'll get your achievement, and I will catch you guys next time. Adios.